Hello, hello, hello. Autoimmune Prepper here. Yes, believe it or not, I'm back with another video. Um, If this is your first time stopping by my channel, welcome. Glad to have you here. I encourage you to subscribe. When you subscribe, make sure you hit that little notification bell. So that way, when I put out new videos, you get notified. Also, give the video a thumbs up. Comment in the comment section so that um, you never know who you may help. You never know who's looking for what information and what you yourself behind the scenes could offer um, to someone along this prepping journey. Anyway, so today I wanted to talk to you guys about cooking as a prepper. I you know, I did a video some time ago, I think, showing how to use the uh, portable gas stove, show you how to put it together and all of that. But I have some extensive additional content that I'm going to read to you. And so pay close attention, jot down notes, watch the video again if you missed anything. Because it's very important that we know how to cook uh, if we have power outages, right? Still need to feed our family. Like, comment, and share. Like, comment, subscribe, share. You guys know the deal. And I have to reiterate that because sometimes I know we watch videos and intentionally, we don't do it intentionally, but we forget to, you know, support the channel by giving it a simple thumbs up and a quick hey or a comment, emoji face, anything in the comment section. Um, to help, to help the channel, help uh, YouTube's algorithm, I guess, put the content out there so that others can see it. Anyway, let me go on to read this to you. So, cooking without power, uh, it's an essential skill for us preppers. One of the biggest challenges that we may face in an emergency situation is figuring out how to cook and prepare our food if the power goes out. It's something that does not cross most people's minds. It does not. But as preppers, we understand the importance of being prepared for every possibility. As many that we can have any control over. Even the basics, like cooking a hot meal when the electricity uh, isn't there to make it easy. Cooking without power isn't just a survival skill. It's a way to maintain a sense of normalcy uh, and comfort in any crisis. Think about it. Being able to enjoy a hot meal, have a warm drink, or just eat something familiar can provide the much-needed comfort, reduce stress, and help us feel grounded when everything around us feels uncertain. But for this, we need both the tools and the know-how to cook without relying on electricity. One of the most versatile cooking methods for preppers is a propane or gas camping stove. That's what I just got finished talking about. These stoves are affordable. Go on Amazon. Compact and portable. Yes, they are. Making them ideal for any emergency situation. They're easy to use. Like I said, I've done a video. I may do a new one um, just so it's more uh, recent. Easy to use and provide a reliable heat source for boiling water, cooking simple meals, or even reheating our food. However, it is important to store extra prop propane canisters safely as you never know how long a power outage might last. I have like cans and cans and cans. For those who are just getting started with prepping, a camping stove is a fantastic first step in preparing to cook without power. Another option is a charcoal or propane grill. Got that too. Most, po most people associate grills with outdoor cooking, but they're also a great backup for emergency situations. That's true. Grills can handle large amounts of food. Uh, more than a small stove, so they're useful if you're cooking for a family or even for your neighbors. Just make sure to keep the just keep and use them outdoors 
or in a well-ventilated area to prevent the risk of carbon monoxide buildup. Okay? You don't want that because you want everybody to wake up the next day, right? So keeping a stock of charcoal or propane handy ensures that you'll have the fuel that you need to cook your several meals. And then there are campfires. So one of the oldest and most reliable methods of cooking in human history, a small outdoor fire pit, I got one of those too, <laughs> or even a homemade fire ring can serve as a cooking area uh, if you're prepared with the right tools. You should have cast iron cookware. That's excellent for this purpose. It's durable, it retains heat very well, and it's safe for open flame cooking. Cooking over a fire takes some practice, but it's a versatile and resourceful way um, to prepare your food. If you have access to firewood, got that too, and a safe space to build a fire. Another great tool for um, preppers is a rocket stove. I don't got one of those, but it looks like I might need to get one, invest in one. Rocket stoves are highly efficient uh, requiring only a small amount of wood or biomass to produce a strong concentrated heat. They're portable and ideal for emergency cooking. They use resources you can gather naturally, like twigs or small branches, and this makes them sustainable, a sustainable option if a power outage lasts for an extended period of time. And then we have Solar ovens, that's another option. Hope you guys are taking notes. Solar ovens are another excellent option, especially if you live in a sunny climate, like sunny Southern California. Um, so I may have to get one of these too. They work by using the sun's energy to cook your food. I thought I purchased one, a solar oven. I think I do, I have so much stuff. I have to go check my inventory. Um, so anyway, they use the sun's energy to cook uh, your food, making them a completely renewable and fuel-free cooking oven. Solar ovens take longer than traditional cooking methods. Seems like that would make sense. Um, but with some planning, they can be incredibly useful. You can cook rice, you can bake bread, you can even roast vegetables, all without a single watt of electricity. Just keep in mind that this option depends on the weather conditions, obviously, because it's solar. So it may not be the most reliable on cloudy, on cloudy or rainy days. Uh, for anyone with um, out access to these tools, it's also worth keeping a stock of food that doesn't even need to be cooked. For instance, things like our canned goods, dry fruit, nuts, and energy bars. While these won't replace the comfort of a hot meal, they are definitely essential for backup <clears throat> for some type of quick nutrition. And they'll keep you going when our fuel or time is limited. And beyond the tools, there's the skill of learning to adapt recipes and simplify your meals. Cooking without power often means we don't have all of our usual conveniences. So it is definitely helpful to practice simple recipes that don't require any ingredients. Or not any ingredients, because you wouldn't be eating many ingredients or complicated steps. So learning to make a one meal pot, a meal stew or rice and beans over a campfire uh, can save you time, conserve fuel, and make the most of your resources. One of the most overlooked aspects of emergency cooking is the importance of safe food storage and sanitation. If the power is out, hmm, you need to know how to handle your perishable foods. Start by cooking and eating what's in your refrigerator. Yep, because those are the items that's going to spoil first. If you have a cooler and ice, store your perishable items in there. And if you can, avoid opening the refrigerator or the freezer unless it's absolutely necessary. 
because keeping it closed will preserve the cool temperatures for a longer period of time. So being a prepper, it just isn't about stockpiling supplies. It's about building skills as well. The ability to cook without power is a skill that once it's learned, makes you a more self-reliant and self-sufficient and resilient person. Uh, knowing that you can provide a warm meal for yourself, for those around you, even in difficult circumstances, it's an empowering feeling. It gives you confidence and peace of mind. In a crisis, small things like a hot meal can lift morale. It can ease stress and bring people together. If you have neighbors or loved ones who aren't prepared, many of us do, you'll be able to share your resources. I don't know about that. They better get prepared. Cook together and build a stronger community. I'm just joking. That's the beauty of preparedness. Um, it just it doesn't just serve you. It just it serves everybody around you. Because you know these people ain't finna prepare. We've been singing it from the mountaintops, and I, I guarantee you, these same people we've been singing to, they still not they they not prepared. They not listening. So if you're thinking about becoming a prepper or if you're already on this journey, do not overlook the importance of cooking without power. Unless your tools, I mean, excuse me, practice your tools, learn new techniques and build your confidence. Because when the unexpected happens, it's these skills that will see us through and not only help us survive, but allow us to support and strengthen our communities. Okay? So I hope this information has resonated with you and has helped you along this prepping journey. I'm going to try and come. I'm not going to try. I'm going to come and bring more uh, information to you because sometimes there's just some things that we just don't think about. Or how about this? We just don't know what we don't know. I'm, I'm sure I don't know everything, but I know a little bit. I know enough. I know how to come and share some information with you. So that you can stay on top of your prepping and share this information with your friends and family. Anyway, I give, give the video a thumbs up. Leave your comments in the comment section. If you have questions, leave those in the comment section as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Uh, remember to wake up and start every day with an attitude of gratitude. I'm so grateful for how far I've come. My life uh, is definitely a journey. Anyway, see you guys later. Bye.